If you liked my video on how to make a mat for the angled top tag, stay tuned to see how to use a little sleight of hand to make mats for other tags. Hi, this is Sage Kimball and I'm the Mad Stamper with another technique video for card makers and paper crafters. In a recent video, I showed an easy way to create a mat for this angled top tag. Since a mat enhances whatever layer you put on top of it, I want to show you how to make them for the scalloped and ornate top tags as well. These two tag topper punches from Stampin' Up will dress up any handmade card or paper craft project, as you can see from these two. But cutting a mat for them isn't as obvious as for the angled top tag. The process is quite simple. It just uses a little magic. I'll start with a scallop top tag. Here's a piece of cardstock, two inches by four and a quarter. I'll go ahead and punch the top and that will remove about an eighth of an inch from the top of my tag. Now I'll take a contrasting color cardstock for the mat and I've cut two pieces. One is two by two and a half and I'll go ahead and punch that with the scallop tag topper punch and I'll set that aside. I'll show you how to figure the length for the second piece, which is two and a quarter inches wide. Here's the tag that I'm going to cut a mat for. And with the scallop tag topper punch, you can see it has a curved area up here, and then it's got just a straight slot kind of underneath that curve. So to determine the length for my mat piece, I'm going to measure from the top of that slot to the end of the tag, which is right at three and three quarter inch. Then I'll add one eighth inch to that number and get the length I need to cut the wider piece of cardstock, which turns out to be three and seven eighths of an inch. Now, if you shudder at the thought of reading fractions on rulers and paper cutters, I've put a link below this video to one that will take the mystery out of it, so you'll be able to read fractions way easy. You'll even be able to download a cheat sheet for measuring sixteenths. The next thing I'll do is take a corner punch and round two of the corners, like so. Then I'll use some temporary adhesive and put the smaller mat behind the larger one. Then I'll take the actual tag and position it so that the margins on three sides are the same. They're an eighth of an inch. And then I can adjust this scalloped top mat so that the margins look nice and even and equal to these. Helps to tack down this tag while I'm fussing with it. When I've got the position the way I want, then I can take one piece at a time apart and adhere it with permanent adhesive. Now I'll show you the ornate top tag, which is made with the new ornate tag topper punch from Stampin' Up's Spring Occasions catalog. It doesn't look like much in the catalog, but once it's set off with a mat like this, I really like it a lot. Anyway, uh, first I'll punch the end of the cardstock, and this actually takes a bigger bite out of the length than the scallop tag topper punch does. This one's about a quarter of an inch. Now I'll take the two by two and a half inch piece of rich raspberry for the mat and push it into the ornate tag topper punch all the way and punch the end. Now when I cut these two inch wide pieces, I place them on my trimmer just a hair under two inches so that it'll slide easily in the punch but not as much as a 1 16th. So the measurement for the two and a quarter inch wide piece of the mat is 
determined by measuring from what I call the shoulder here of this ornate top down to the bottom of the tag which is right about three and a half inches. So I'll add an eighth to that, which will give me three and five eighths inch. Now I can put the mat together the same way I did for the scalloped tag, using a little dotto to hold them in place. I'm going for about an eighth of an inch from the shoulder of the punched mat to the straight edge of the other piece. Now I'll put some temporary adhesive on the tag and position the bottom of the tag an eighth of an inch above the bottom of the mat and make any adjustments to the punched end of the mat. And then I can put this together with permanent adhesive. So I hope this has inspired you to try a little tag magic. You'll have great looking tags for handmade cards, gift wraps, and anything else that will hold still long enough to put a tag on it. For more inspiration and instruction, be sure to visit me on my website at www.stampingmadly.com, the Stamping Madly Facebook page, and the Mad Stamper YouTube channel. Happy stamping!